Again, brothers and sisters, that's a joy. Hallelujah. To serve you by uh, providing you with these simple lessons from God's Word that will continue to affirm what the Lord is doing in your life, continue to encourage you, continue to equip you. The whole idea is to, as like what the Apostle Paul has said in Colossians 1, verse 28, idea of ministry, us doing ministry in your life, is to present you fully mature in Christ Jesus, or perfect or complete in Christ Jesus, so that you will become useful in the kingdom of God. You will become contributors in the advance of the kingdom of God, right where you are residing, right where you are living, whatever is your status in life. That's the whole idea. We are not entertaining any idea at all anymore, wherein you have to come to us week after week after week after week, and me, the rest of us, ministering to you. No more of that kind, brothers and sisters. Again, I'm saying these are just but simple supplements in addition to what you are receiving personally from the Lord as you draw near to Him. Remember, that's our lesson last Sunday. You are, we are all to draw near to God or come to God. He will come to us. Amen. We have to cry out before Him. Amen. Grieve, mourn, weep. Wail, turn our laughter to mourning, joy in the gloom. This is our crying out because we want to receive something from Him during the moments that we are drawing near to Him. And these things that we see from Him will not only be ours to enjoy, but the whole idea is we want to receive so that we will have something to give to people around us where God has called us to serve and to minister. We cannot give what we have never received. We cannot give what we do not have. Amen. That's the whole idea. We're not begging and crying and wailing because we want to give, we want to receive something to spend it on ourselves alone. No, we're done with that. We have overcome that immature thinking already. Our minds, our hearts are maturing. Our vision becoming clearer and bigger and better. For the glory of God. So that whatever is happening in our life as the Lord allows, allows it to happen. We still can serve Him. We still will be useful unto Him. We still will be contributors in the advance of the kingdom of God. Amen. Say Amen. Hallelujah. Now let's proceed to James chapter 4 again. I'm jumping two verses over. I go to verse 13. Uh, up to verse 17. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Father, thank you again that you will bless us with your word through the work, special work, marvelous work, miraculous work, wonderful work of the Holy Spirit who is our teacher who will reveal to us from God's scriptures, from God's word, who will empower us, equip us, strengthen us, build our life, so we can have truly a life that will be useful and impactful for the glory of Jesus. In his name we pray and ask. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, those of you who are uh, with us in BCC, you know, with, with me, you have listened to me for some time now, especially those of you who are joining whenever there's uh somebody who has died and we do a funeral service you have regularly heard me or have known me use this passage no? in the book of James so let's go over again uh, this uh, short uh, passage here from verse 13 to verse 17 and uh, let's get to know what the Holy Spirit has in store for us to encourage us and uh, continue to build our life. Verse 13 now. Now, listen, you who say. Now, who are these people who are saying these things? Of course, for one, the people of the world. The people of the world, they love to say these things. They, you know, are prone to say these things. These are things commonly hear, heard from them. Hmm. But, not only them, but also a significant portion of uh, God's people, Christians, especially those who are not maturing, 
we will hear them also say these things. You know? Now, what are these things that they're saying? Listen, you who say in quotation, today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Okay. As I said, most of those who are saying these things are people who are not followers of God, don't believe in God, or maybe they don't believe in God, but they lost their faith along the way and they even do not recognize or realize it. But from the ranks of those who believe in God, we still hear some of them say these things. You know, today or tomorrow, we go to this or that city, spend the year there, carry on business, and make money. As if they are the ones that's in control of their life. It appears they are sure of everything that will happen tomorrow, today, and wherever they want to go. Today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, specific. Uh, spend a year there. There is a time frame involved. Carry on business. That's what they want to do there. Business. Do business. And make money. That's the goal. That's the end result. That is what they are expecting to happen in their life. They will make money, lots and lots of money. For sure, the Bible is not against money because the Bible, even Jesus, recognizes the need for money. You know, At one time, he was in need of some fee, a, coin, a, a particular coin which he wishes to use as an illustration. So he has to borrow from his audience. Somebody handed him a coin. And so he asked the audience, whose inscription, whose face is here, and whose inscription? Remember that account? Hmm. So money is not totally evil. you know. In fact, it has nothing, I mean, in short, money is neutral. Hmm. It depends on who is handling the money, who is using the money. So money is not necessarily evil. Uh, God did not warn us about money. He warns us about love of money. The love of money is root of all evil. So when a person makes a plan, a future plan, a long-range plan for the sake of his future and his family, it's a very okay. However, if your long-range plan is all about money and nothing else, that is still okay. If you do not believe in God, if you don't follow Jesus Christ, that's okay. That's for you. Feel free. Enjoy. But if you are a Christian, if you are a follower of Jesus, if you say you know Jesus, the Son of God, the one who died on the cross for you, the one whose blood was shed for you, and then you say these things, and the bottom line is still money, you are no better than the people of the world. It's a sad reflection of your life. So what's the recommendation of the Apostle James? He furthers on in the next verse, verse 15 or 14, why? He was asking why. Meaning, why are you saying these things? When you are confessing to be a follower of Jesus, you are saying these things? You are a follower of Jesus? You are a disciple? You say you are a disciple and this is what you're saying? Are you not embarrassed of yourself? Are you not ashamed of yourself? <laughs> Why? And then he goes on to say, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. And this is for the rest of us all, including non-believers. None of us knows what will happen tomorrow. None of us is so sure and certain about our days here on earth. No, it's in the hands of God. Our future, our work, our marriage, our children, our health, it's in the hands of God. Nobody is certain and sure. Say, Amen. You do not know what will happen tomorrow. One thing I know. One thing I know. I know that I am with God. God is with me. He lives inside me. That's sure. That's certain. That's unchangeable. Hallelujah. Amen. But the events that's going to happen, none of us. You know, one of the biggest uh, business <laughs> out there is forecasting uh, about tomorrow. That is why almost all the magazines and newspapers that you can buy in the market, 
always has a place for horoscopes. And these are, you know, things, these are, that will try to tell you what will become of you tomorrow. What the stars has for you. You know, I do not rely my future on the stars. Stars are volatile, you know. I put my hope in the God who created me, made me in his likeness and image. In the God who loved me so much, he sent his son to die for me, to redeem me, cleanse me, restore me, wash me in the blood of his son. I put my trust and my future in the God who gave his spirit to me, now residing in me, comforting, assuring, helping me all throughout. Hallelujah. I am safe in the hands of God. I don't know what will happen tomorrow. I know who holds my tomorrow. Amen. Those are some few lines directly from a song, by the way. <laughs> so you know not even know what will happen tomorrow. Will you get promoted tomorrow? Will you be demoted tomorrow? Will you have lots of money tomorrow? Will you have less money tomorrow? <laughs> some people, they spend a lot of time wasting trying to figure out what will happen tomorrow. That is called worry. Jesus addressed that substantially in Matthew chapter 6. And the ending of the verse there says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Verse uh, Matthew 6 verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be given to you as well. Because we are so particular about our tomorrow, but our tomorrow is hinged on things. Money, house, car, etc., etc., nice clothes, you know, branded clothes, and jewelries, and reputation, and fame. That's, uh, that's our tomorrow. But we all know these things are passing away. None of these will stand the test of time. But when we seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, we can rest assured, sleep peacefully, dream in color <laughs> that these things that others are worrying about, wasting your time, losing their brains, these things will be given to us by the Father at the right time, in the right way, for the glory of His name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, so again, huh? what is your life? Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? What is your life? Now, he answered the question himself, the Apostle James. What's your life? He says, you are a mist. Can you tell that to yourself? I am a mist. Just in case you have a neighbor right now viewing this broadcast, give him a shake, handshake. You are a mist, brother or sister. You are a mist. Simply put, you are temporary here on earth. None of us is permanent here on earth. Why a mist is one of the many things or the few things are so temporary. It's mist, a smoke, a vapor, appears for a little while, then vanishes away. The portion of time that we spend here on earth, 30, 50, 75, 120 years, or even longer than that, is just but a little while. Brothers and sisters, and wisdom tells us we are not to waste this little while that God has alluded to us. Instead, we have to find God's will and align our little while to what is the will of God and do the will of God with the best that we could for the glory of His name. That's how we ought to live our life. Amen. So, what's your life? You are a mist. You are temporary. There is an eternal life that God has prepared, an eternal place that God has prepared for those who believe in Him, believe in Jesus. But the early life that we have is only for a little while. Then vanishes away. You know, it would have been better if He used, a, instead of a mist, He used another word picture. But again, He did not, simply because He wants to emphasize a very important point. And that is, life is short. Life is fragile. Life is unpredictable. Hallelujah. You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. That's why in one verse in the book of Mark, Jesus said, What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses on so? <laughs> you know, on a regular basis, the verse comes back to me. 
when I am, whenever I am thinking about some person, this person, that person who has done so well in his work, in his endeavors, and he has been blessed materially, was able to really establish a good life as far as worldly standard is concerned, built a nice big house, cars, traveled so many places, you know, ill boat with the highs up there. And then when he is gone in a few more years, Nobody ever remembers him anymore. Truly, what Jesus has spoken is true. What shall it profit a man? With the little while that God will allot us, has allotted us, wisdom dictates that we are to use this properly and not waste it, squander it away. No. You know, when you have so little money, you better use it properly. Don't squander. Don't waste. Yeah. You know, I remember whenever we have a, a water, you know, interruption, water company will announce, you know, two or three days, there's no water. Every one of us, you know, those areas that are affected, every house will, you know, Put ma put water in the containers. Buy get all the containers available and fill it with water because for the next two or three days there's no water. And then we 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 kind of use water so nicely and wisely, isn't it true? You know, I can take a bath by just one small pail. That's what well, that's good. Hmm. We learn to economize when we know it's little that there is. Hmm. That is why God, in His wisdom and in His goodness, allows occasional, occasional seasons of there's nothing there or there's just very little there to remind us to be wise and not to be squanderous and wasteful. Amen? You are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. What's the next verse? Indeed, instead, you ought to say. Meaning, he wants, he doesn't want us to say this. He wants instead for all of us to say this. And what we are to say, if it is the Lord's will, if you are a true, genuine, you know, authentic, uh, loyal follower of Jesus Christ, you are that person who pursues the will of God topmost of your life. You do not want to do anything, even if it is a good, good thing, if it is not the will of God. You only want to do what is the will of God. Remember the prayer that Jesus has taught his disciples in Matthew 6, <clears throat> which begins, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be, your name. To hallow one's name means to make one's name special. Make one's name so honored, so revered, feared. That's what it means. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Right there in the prayer, Jesus has taught everyone who wants to follow him to put the highest premium on the will of God. So that when we do whatever we are doing, we're making it sure it's in line with God's will. Because when we do it, and it's not the will of God, it's a waste of time, waste of effort, waste of resources. Why are you doing such a thing when it's not God's will? And because you are doing something that it's not God's will, you cannot expect Compensation. You cannot expect reward. Will God reward you if you were doing something which are not in line with God's will? No. In fact, He will punish you. <laughs> because you were doing it in direct contradiction to what He was saying. We are to say if it's the Lord's will, meaning... Why? We are to be people that would always, should always talk about God's will. God's will. What is God's will in my life? This is God's will in my life. 
I do not want to do this, but because it is God's will, I will do this with all my strength. I live to do God's will. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I belong to God. I cannot live this life anymore for my sake. I will live this life for the glory of God. Let's look at this verse in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20. Do you not know your body, that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? Who is in you? Holy Spirit. Where did he come from? You receive him from God, whom you have received from God. And because of that, what happened to your life? You are not your own, meaning you don't belong. You don't, you don't own your life anymore. Your life does not belong to you anymore because you were bought with a price. Bought at a price. To whom do you belong now? Be, you belong to God. Therefore, honor God with your body. Honor God with your body, meaning honor God with your life. Hallelujah. How do you honor God with your life? By living your life according to your will, according to your whims, according to your caprices? Or will you honor your life by doing God's will? When you do God's will, you honor God with your life. Amen. In fact, you worship God with your life because worship is everything that you do for the glory of God. Worship is not just something you do on Sunday morning. When you go to so-called church and then you attend, you go through the motion, you call that worship, and then the rest of the day you live your life for your sake, pursuing money, pursuing wealth, pursuing fame, fortune, this world offers, and you call yourself a Christian? No. If someone is still doing that and he claims he is a Christian, he's deceived. Yeah. Because a Christian does not live his life anymore for himself. When you say you are a Christian, you lose your right already. You have been dead, dead to the world, dead to yourself, dead to your ambition, dead to your own dream. You now are living for God. Every bit of your life belongs to God. Every second of your life belongs to God. Every part of your being, every cell of your body belongs to God. You are to honor God with your body and with your life. So to say things like that, is contrary to God's will. What the scripture says, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. Yes. If it is the will of God, I'm not afraid to do it. That's what you're saying. If it is the will of my God, I will not be remiss in doing it. If it is the will of God, I will not be slack in doing it. I will give it my best job because I know it is the will of my God. Amen? If it is the will of God, I'll do it even if nobody is watching me. Amen? If it is the Lord's will, I will, we will live and do whatever is the Lord's will. Even if it is difficult, even if it means I dead at the end. I am already dead in the beginning, by the way. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. I am praying that as you listening to this, those of you, BCC people, who are relocated by the Lord, some of you are here, some of you are there. You know, nice, beautiful country. Life is good. So many things before you. Many things that you were deprived of since you were born until you relocated there. Sometimes some of you are thinking, wow, this is heaven. And you start enjoying and you forget who you are. You forget your God. You forget your Savior. You forget your, your purpose. I'm saying this to waken you up, to remind you. It's my duty. I'm fulfilling God's will in my life. I am not here for money. I'm not making a living, my brothers and sisters. I do not care anymore for reputation. I'm just fulfilling what is my assignment. And to you, I am sharing these truths from God's word, equipping and teaching you, building your life, helping you to become mature so that wherever you go, you will become the person that can be relied upon by God himself. So that when he wants to do something in your area where you live, in the area where you are working, he doesn't have to bring someone from outside. He can tap you and use your life. Why? Because he has a man in that place where you are living. At that man, that woman is you. Amen. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. I am releasing God's spirit of wisdom and understanding under you today. Revelation. Your minds will be enlightened. 
It will change the direction and the course of your life, believe me. And you will be thankful and forever be grateful unto God. Because at what point in time in your life, He has intervened, hallelujah, for your sake and on your behalf. Not only for you, but for the sake of your next generation. Through these lessons that God is providing. Amen. I'm not making these things up just to entertain you. <laughs> Remember, I'm not making any money here. I'm just pouring out my heart as the Lord has touched inside of me, blesses me with this understanding of God's word. I'm just allowing this to come out. Amen. I can say this is the work of the Holy Spirit. He is directly encouraging you through this lesson from God's word, using my mouth, using my life. And that's all. And I am praying none of us will be boastful. Let me finish this and then we pray. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast and brag. When you return to us, it is what is what it is. Today or tomorrow, we go to this or that city. If that's what you're saying, that's what you're saying. You are boasting. You are bragging. And all such boasting is evil. So many people, they boast about their tomorrow. They boast their present. Some even boast about their past. And when you boast for whatever are you are boasting about, Boasting is evil. All such boasting is evil. We cannot boast about our tomorrow, neither shall we boast about our today or our past, our present or future. Now, we can only rejoice in the goodness of God. Hallelujah. We can only rejoice in the goodness of God. If there is one thing we can boast, we can boast about the Lord and what He has done in our life and what He is doing and what He will continue to do. And we fall flat on our face before Him because we know we're never deserving. There's only one who is deserving, and that's Him. Hallelujah. He, receive, he deserves to receive all glory, honor, and praises, and worship, and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. None of us will become like what we are today apart from the grace of God. All boasting is evil. I'm praying. That God will give us increase of understanding in this. We can make use of our time this little while. Hallelujah. Amen. And let the Lord use us wherever we are. Let him make us as his instrument, as his agent of change, as his ambassador. He has given us so much already. And out of what he has given us, we can start distributing. We can start sharing with people. Amen. And we will watch with our eyes what God will do in someone else's life. Making our life as his instrument. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you. Thank you, dear Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for reminding us, for helping us. Live a simpler life. Amen. A life that is more connected to you, directed by you, led by you, empowered by your spirit, sustained by your spirit and by your word. Thank you, dear Lord, that we shall not boast about anything, O Lord God, apart from what you have done in our life. Salamat, Lord, for empowering us. I am praying that wherever we are, God, we will make use of our time, thinking about what, what we can contribute as the Spirit leads us to the advance of the kingdom of Jesus for the glory of His name and the honor of the Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are our helper. You will help us, comfort us, lead us and guide us. You will teach us, show us things to come. Holy Spirit, thank you. Woo! In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.